Hi everybody, I am David Espinel, research engineer at Orange Labs, France. And today I'm going to talk to you about how to provide on-demand multi-site connectivity for edge infrastructures with Diminet, a distributed model for inter-site networking resources management. So let's begin. So here we have a simple representation of how the backbone of a telecom operator can be seen. We have a few data centers where infrastructure as a service services are proposed using virtual infrastructure, infrastructure managers like OpenStack. And we have a series of regional and local point of presence that interconnects different access networks. Today, we have needs and requirements from IoT, network function virtualization, and the 5G that are challenging this traditional centralized approach. In a traditional deployment, as the one of the example, there are several problems related to the centralized management. The OpenStack instance by itself will be a single point of failure and a bottleneck. Moreover, some studies have shown the problems of using a single centralized OpenStack entity to manage a distributed infrastructure, being the bottleneck, the communication bus. So we need the beam to be closer to the user, in some cases to respect delay constraints, to avoid traffic overhead at the backbone also, and in other cases to respect legal requirements, where data needs to be stored at a precise site and not at a data center location. For this reason, we were interested in a different approach. We ask ourselves, what will happen if you use every point of presence as a micro data center, deploying one instance of OpenStack per pop with computational and storage cap capabilities? We refer to this as a distributed IaaS management, where resources are managed in a collaborative way among OpenStack instances. In this way, we can respect the delay constraint, we can avoid the traffic overhead, and we can meet the legal requirements. This kind of deployment has been proposed at the Edge Computing Next Step in Architecture Design and Testing web paper of the OpenStack Edge Computing Group. But even if this approach could better fit the requirement and constraints, it raises several questions from a management point of view. We focus especially in how to manage and interconnect networking constructions belonging to several independent beams in a distributed native way. So software stacks like OpenStack have been conceived to work in a pretty standalone way, managing a single deployment. So we need a solution capable to control both intra and inter pub infrastructure connectivity. And of course, we need this connectivity solution to be provided while guaranteeing the scalability, resiliency, locality awareness and automation of the entire system. The scalability means that the infrastructure should not be restricted by design to a certain amount of beams deployed. For the resiliency, all parts of the infrastructure should be able to survive to network partitioning issues. So the isolated sites should remain locally operative. The locality awareness implies that locally created data should remain as local as possible. If you have resources created at a pub at the Paris region, you will expect these resources to be stored in the closest location of Paris and not at Nice, for instance. And finally, the configuration and instantiation of inter-site resources shall be kept as simple as possible to allow the deployment of complex scenarios. So, how to provide the networking resources proposed in the centralized model, but in a distributed way? With this, I mean the network, subnetworks, routers, service function chaining, and other networking objects proposed by a single neutron instance. So, one of the most important challenges is to identify which networking information should be shared among beams. If we take the example of a network and its corresponding subnetwork being shared between the two sites as in the picture, 
it is necessary to find out which information should be exchanged regarding the IP addresses provided, provided in the segment. One possibility could be to communicate every time an IP is assigned or to logically divide the IP allocation pool among the two sites. So, this information will depend on the type of resource because, as you know, it's not the same thing the verification that we need to do to do routing than the verification to do the extension of a, net of a network. So, secondly, we wanted to define the scope of a request. Should we broadcast the information at every site? Should we use a huge replicated database? The idea was to mitigate as much as possible the overhead of management traffic. The third challenge is related to information availability. In case of network disconnection, each event should be able to provide its service locally. Of course, the non-disconnected sites should still propose inter-site resources management. We also consider it two technological challenges. The first one is related to the implementation of well-defined automatized interfaces to allow the communication among beams. And the second one is related to the networking technologies actually allowing us to interconnect the network constructions at the data plane level. So to answer these challenges and to provide a distributed management, we look at, at a field that has been heavily studied in the last year, software defined network. If you look at literature propositions, and industrial solutions, there are a lot of SDN controllers used in a distributed fashion. So to take inspiration, we analyzed several SDN controllers composed by multiple instances. And we found two of these controllers, DISCO and Open the Light on Federation Mod, that use a physically and logically distributed architecture, leveraging a collaboration among controllers. So, inspired in these two SDN controllers, we designed Diminet, a distributed model for inter-site networking resources management. So, Diminet relies on a fully distributed architecture where independent modules are deployed beside the networking beam service, in this case neutral. Since beams are independent among them and also independent among modules, New Diminet instances can join the deployment without affecting others' behavior. Thanks to this architecture, single point of failure and bottleneck issues are mitigated because we do not depend on a single point of entry to create inter-site resources, but instead they can be created at all Diminet instances. If we do a comparison with the TriCircle project, when you use a tricircle deployment, even to create local elements, you must address to the central neutral. In a Diminet deployment, this is not an issue, since you communicate directly with every neutron instance. Diminet instances will also share only the necessary inter-site resource-related information, because by contacting only the relevant sites for a request, we will mitigate network communication overhead. So Diminet takes really serious the scope of a request. So how Diminet modules are composed? Following the approach of the two picket SDN controllers, we have a database local to every instance. To communicate among modules, every instance has an horizontal interface inspired by the east-west interface of SDN controllers and a user-face API allowing the user to request the creation of inter-site resources. We have implemented the Layer 2 extension and the Layer 3 routing resource. I will talk more about these resources just in a minute. And every module has a logic core with, which is in charge of the actual management and coordination among modules. So because every type of resource needs a different management, a pair resource type logic has been implemented in the logic core in order to provide the correct management for these resources. So what this really means when a user wants to manage inter-site resources? Let's take an example of the layer 3 routing resource. 
So this is a logical router used to interconnect subnetworks present in independent sites. So a request to DMINET is addressed to any module providing the following information. The resource type, in this case layer 3 routing, possibly a name, and a list of network identifiers and the sites where they belong. So we rely on Keystone to find the information of remote endpoints and we use the remote region's name to locate sites. In this example, the user addresses to DMINET1 of region 1, requesting the creation of a layer 3 routing resource among network A of region 1, network B of region 2, and network C of region 3. So we know that to do routing among subnetworks, they need not to overlap. So the step number one is to query remote modules and the local neutron about the network's subnetwork prefix. Once the module 1 receives this information, it proceeds to do the verification in step 2. And once this is OK, internally it creates and stores the DMINET objects in the database. And then in step 3, we send an horizontal communication to the two remote modules requesting the creation of a layer 3 resource and announcing that DMINET1 is the master of the resource. Why we did that? Because we didn't want to pay the price in terms of delay and complexity of a consensus algorithm. So we preferred to use a pair resource master to act as the current leader for the resource information. This master model also create, creates a global identifier for the resource that will be announced to remote sites. At this point, every module has created the local DMINET objects related to the inter-site resources. And we are ready to proceed to the interconnection that I will explain in a few minutes. So, as you can see, a logical inter-site resource is composed by several local sub-resources that exist in every one of the requested sites. So now let's take a look to the second kind of resource, the layer 2 extension resource. In this case, the user is able to expand a, net, a network and its subnetwork to several locations. This means that we have a subnetwork spawning several OpenStack deployments. And how this is provided? So the user will address a request to a DMINET module with resource type layer 2 extension and providing the identifier of one of the local networks, in the case of our example, it is network A identifier, and the list of remote regions where this network will be extended. In our example, it is region 2 and region 3. In the step number 1, DMINET1 queries its local neutron about network A information to do the management. Once this information is retrieved, in the step 2, the module does an IP allocation pool splitting to provide independent allocation pools to remote regions. In this way, we do a logical division of the allocation pool so every site can allocate IPs without affecting the other site's behavior. In step 3, the module sends the request to remote modules to create an inter-site resource of type layer 2 extension providing the list of regions and the identifiers. At this point, it's, it only provides region 1 network identifier and all the parameters such as the subnetwork prefix and IP allocation pool that remote regions will use to create the corresponding network and subnetworks. At the step 4, each DMI net will request to its local neutron the creation of a network and subnetwork with all the parameters provided by the master module and also to do the corresponding DHCP settings. So they will respond with the network identifiers to the master module that at the final step will do an update of the list of sub-resources in his database and will also send the remote request to the modules 2 and 3 to update the inter-site resource with all the necessary remote identifiers. So why we are sending these identifiers to every site composing the inter-site resource? What about the way to interconnect all these subjects at the data plane level? So 
we didn't want to reinvent the wheel. So instead, we look at, at all, all the possibilities inside the Neutron plugins to use the best technology for our model. And actually, we found that the Neutron to Neutron interconnection plugin was pretty close to what we needed to interconnect all our deployments once the logical information of the inter-site resource is, was successfully instantiated. So, what is Neutron Interconnections? The Neutron Interconnection plugin proposes to leverage BGP VPN route exchange among two Neutron instances by giving to Neutron the information of the local and remote resources that will be connected through a BGP VPN. So, each site will allocate independently the root target identifiers and will exchange them by using any kind of BGP implementation at the overlay level using for instance GoBGP or at the underlay level using physical equipment. So one interconnection object is created for each pair of local resource and remote resource. So in the case of a layer 3 routing resource composed by three sites, at each site we will have two interconnection objects. For an, for an interconnection to be in active state, the users need to create the initial interconnection and the symmetrical one in the remote neutron. So the service plugin will check if the symmetric interconnection exists and once it is verified, they will exchange the root target identifiers. So let's take a look of how a neutron deployment leveraging the neutron interconnection plugin can be seen. So we have the plugin Neutron Interconnection activated in blue and using the VGP VPN driver. We also have the BGP VPN service plugin which uses the Backpipe BGP VPN driver and in compute nodes we have the Backpipe extension activated. When we create an interconnection object, the service plugin we will do all the necessary calls to the BGP VPN API of Neutron to create the BGP VPN object and do an update to attach the local network to it. In this case, BGP VPN uses a list of import, on, of import and export targets. Export targets are used to announce the routes of the attached objects and import targets are used to express interest in the routes announced with that target. In our example for the network A, we will use the route target 64.512.4000 to announce its routes and we will import routes announced with the route target 64.512.6000. This is done by using the backpipe extension that with all the necessary rules inside the switch once the different BGP VPN routes are exchanged. After that, the traffic is encapsulated and sending directly to the remote switch. So now let's take a look to our implementation. So we implemented Diminet as a Python server deployed besides Neutron. And for our proof of concept, we used the French testbed grid 5000, using in total 21 depth stack stain deployments with ML2 OBS type driver and L2 population and networking backpipe extension in compute nodes. And for the service plugins, we used the Neutron Interconnection service plugin and the networking BGP VPN service plugin. For the BGP implementation needed to exchange the routes, we used Go BGP routing instances deployed as the local gateway routers for the depth stack deployments. And to increase the scalability of the BGP route exchange, we deployed three route reflectors. So the goals of our experiment were to verify that inter-site resources were correctly created at each site and to measure the time it took to create each kind of inter-site resource among two three, four, up to 21 different sites. So we can say that the distributed approach actually did a pretty good work and we were capable to instantiate the inter-site resources. In the first campaign of test that we did, there was a problem related to the remote module scales, so the time started to increase more or less exponentially. 
we fix that and in the second camp and the second campaign show it a slightly better performance. Most of the time needed for the inter-site resources instantiation is consumed by neutron when creating objects or doing requests. So in the case of the layer 2 extension, since more exchanges are needed with the neutron API, it adds extra delay for the total time of creation. However, even if our model works, it does it outside the scope of neutron. So we take the presumption that the user will do not further change it directly to the neutron objects. As a consequence, if our module is implemented as a service plugin, some changes will be needed inside neutron code to assure or guarantee that the service plugin is the only capable to touch some created inter-site sub-resources. We also consider implementing more complex networking resources, such as inter-site service function chaining. And we are going to optimize our code because uh, the little augmentation of almost 200 milliseconds each, each time a site is added is a little bizarre. So to summarize, we have presented Diminet, a module capable to provide networking connectivity in a multi-deployment OpenStack scenario. By realizing in a fully distributed architecture, inter-site networking resources are created on demand and exchanging only the necessary information, diminishing the quantity of management traffic among instances. The diminished contribution actually goes beyond the technical contribution on the network scenario. We are investigating how can the diminished proposal be generalized to other services to make them collaborative with minimal efforts in terms of development. Such a generic pieces of code may represent a huge contribution to deliver, to deliver building blocks for collaboration between independent systems. So if you have questions, do not hesitate to ask. Thank you very much for your attention.